Hello, my name is Sean Stowers, and I'm a learning business partner with Pearson. Pearson is a 175-year-old company, and we're focused on helping organizations improve the lives of their employees through learning. And I'm here today to tell, talk to you all about why we are all in this together and talk about forming meaningful workforce strategies that can be the key to unleashing your talent transformation. So for most of us in learning, I think we were all uh, probably sh applauding the Business Roundtable recently when they issued their statement on the purpose of a corporation. And really what was interesting was that you had this group of CEOs coming together to say that a pur the purpose of the association of a corporation was really promoting an economy that serves all Americans. And specifically, these CEOs came together and began to call out the need to invest in our employees. And that starts with fair compensation and providing important meaningful benefits, including training and development. Now, as we consider this, consider uh, some data from the World Economic Forum. And, and, and the fact that the World Economic Forum tells us that employers can only take on profitably about 14% of the $34 billion needed to reskill employees for jobs of the future. And that this accounts for only a quarter of the 1.37 million workers in the, in the US that will be displaced by automation. So naturally, this begs the question of who will pay for the reskilling revolution? And I think that what we are seeing in the, in the marketplace is the opportunity to create really interesting workforce partnerships at, to answer some of these questions. One example of, a such part, of such partnership is the work that we are involved in with the American Hotel and Lodging Association and Red Roof Inn. In this partnership, we're working with Red Roof to extend educational benefits to their employees, both in their corporate locations and in their franchise locations, uh, including very important foundational education, such as the GED, and also a pathway to associate's degrees. This sort of partnership where we're bringing together a not-for-profit industry association, corporations and recognized brands such as Red Roof, and our work at Pearson as an educational ecosystem management company, is enabling Red Roof to provide benefits to their employees and access to education that previously hadn't been possible. Another great example is um, actually based in Chicago in, in the work of the Chicago Community Trust and the Chicago Workforce, Fu Workforce Funders Alliance and Reimagine Retail. This is a cross-sector, cross-service sector initiative where um, employers based in the Chicagoland area and hospitality in retail and in the restaurant industry are coming together to work on common um, people and talent strategies. Notice, notably in this initiative, you see um, the, the Chicago Workforce Funders Alliance providing funding to provide, to create an innovation lab where employers are coming together to look at um, issues such as management training and how management training um, impacts frontline worker development and ultimately how to raise um, the overall professionalism in the service sector. One of the th reasons that we think that this is critically important for learning leaders is that, again, the, the bill for reskilling and in, in, in creating new opportunities for employees cannot be borne by em employers alone. So what we would recommend for learning leaders and what we certainly suggest is reach out to create these sort of partnerships in order to provide opportunities and pathways that may not have been previously available to your employees. What we find is, in terms of the impact, and, and certainly in our work, is that the stories that you hear are the ones that make the difference and certainly are important when you're selling this into your senior executives. For example, in our work with Red Roof in, our, in the educational program, one of the great stories that we, we love to tell is the story of Vanessa. Vanessa was a um, front desk worker at a Red Roof in Southern California, had two daughters, and she had a daughter who was struggling in high school. Vanessa didn't have her high school diploma, and so within 90 days of launching our program, Vanessa earned her GED. And when we asked Vanessa why she wanted to earn her GED and why it was important, she said, I wanted to show my daughter that it was possible, and if I couldn't, if I couldn't show her that I could attain my high school diploma and my high school credential, how could I expect her to believe that she could achieve hers? It's those sort of stories that come to come mind when we talk about the impact of public and private partnerships and, and working to extend um, educational opportunities 
to our employees that maybe have not traditionally been extended. So if you could take one thing away from our, our session today, it's that you don't have to go it alone. And, and there, if you're um, not sure of where to start, there's a number of ways to look at um, forming partnerships in your local communities. Some of those are looking for your local charitable trust or community-based organizations. You can look for your local workforce investment board. If you are in a specific industry, you may have industry associations that are looking to impact the lives of the employees in your industry. And those are all great ways to find partnerships so that you are not going it alone. There's a lot that uh, to learn in, in this space, and we certainly would hope that all of you um, in, the, in the session today uh, picked up some great strategies for how to uh, build those meaningful partnerships for workforce development. Thank you.